Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford, and uh, on this channel in which I primarily deal with Old Norse language, myth, and runes, I've also done a fair amount of talking about other Old Germanic languages, including Old English and Gothic, which I realize there aren't also a lot of good resources about online. Um, in this video, what I'm going to do is look at just a couple short text selections from Gothic and talk about how it's different from Old Norse in some really salient ways that are quite real, usually reflected in Gothic just being at a somewhat more archaic stage of development as far as the Germanic language goes, but also how there are some similarities that are occluded just by the way Gothic is spelled really differently from how Old Norse is spelled. So in this video, I'm not going to be dealing with the Gothic alphabet per se, but with transliteration of the Gothic alphabet, that is, substituting Roman alphabet letters for the Gothic alphabet letters. That just makes this a little bit more straightforward, and uh, might actually be worthwhile to do a Gothic alphabet video one day, but it's just not uh, salient to the point of contrasting the languages themselves. So let's look at a sample text. Titus 1.1 from Wolfilla's Gothic Bible translation. You're going to get different impressions from different people of what Gothic would sound like, particularly whether uh, there are any true diphthongs in Gothic or not. I'm going to read this as if there are, but you're going to get different pronunciations of different people again. Paulus skalks gudis if apostolus Jesus Christos be galovinae Walidazi do this yah uf kunthias unios si be gaguthin ist. All right, so Paul, a servant of God uh, and uh, apostle of Jesus Christ by the, by the leave, as it were, of the chosen of God and of the knowledge of sin uh, who is by goodness all right that's not uh, exactly what this text sounds like in uh, any publishing this translation but just to give you a more straightforward straight up translation of what it says there in the gothic now the closest i think you could get just using the same words in old norse would be Paul skulker dvis, and no related word here, so I'll say ok, postly, Jesu Christs. Uh, this preposition, English by, is also missing in Old Norse, maybe something like av, leivi, valitra, dvis, ovkini, that particular compound doesn't exist in Old Norse or isn't attested, but that's what it would be, sunyar, Suit S uh, because say is a compound of so, the uh, demonstrative pronoun that in the feminine nominative singular plus E, which is a Gothic relative particle like archaic Old Norse S, classical Old Norse air, so no exact equivalent uh, of Givi. Uh, also, that particular word doesn't exist in Old Norse. S. Now, some differences of spelling that come up. One of the most noticeable is that in Gothic, based on the spelling of, or what, no, let's say like early medieval Greek is probably the best way to put this, a precursor to Byzantine Greek, definitely not classical Greek anymore, something kind of like, but later than, the Greek of the New Testament, spells E, the sound E as EI, which uh, Old Norse doesn't. Old Norse spells that with a long I. 
Uh, also, this isn't necessarily a spelling difference, but actually a real sound change difference. Gothic still has Germanic Z, which has become R in Old Norse. It's very common in grammatical endings in Germanic languages. So, Gawalivazi, uh, Gawalivaze, which is a uh, genitive plural adjective, Old Norse, Valitra. That's an R where that Z is in Gothic. Uh, there's also a uh, principle in Gothic spelling where D, B, G mean stops when they are at the beginning of a stress syllable, B, D, G, but they mean fricatives when they don't come at the beginning of a stress syllable, V, Z, G. In Old Norse, that V, which is spelled with a B in Gothic is going to be spelled generally with an F, so that Galovinai, Galovinai is uh, more cognate to Levi than it looks like it would be because the B and the F are actually spelling the same sound or close to the same sound. But also notice, of course, that Gothic doesn't have I mutation, so it has AU, the original uh, diphthong there, whereas Old Norse has an I mutated EY. Uh, in a moment, I'll come back and look at a couple more critical differences here after a quick word from my friends and partners at Grim Frost. Let's go through this word by word and look at a couple other things that are really different. Um, Paulus Paul, just an adaptation of a Greek name. Um, Skalx versus Skulker. What's happened here is that the original nominative singular ma masculine marking Z has become an S at the end of words in Gothic, but that Z always becomes an R in Old Norse. So these are otherwise the exact same word. The vowel is long in Old Icelandic because its vowels are lengthened before an L plus uh, labial or velar consonant. Interestingly, in Old Norse, this word means villain, not servant. Um, it's kind of funny how words for villain and servant can uh, switch semantic place in languages. The same thing has happened with, for example, villain, which is related to villa, right? Someone who lives uh, on the villa, right? Kind of a servant, a peasant, recast as a villain from an upper class perspective. Uh, Guthis or Guths, genitive singular, Old Norse has lost the vowel in the ending. If uh, that's cognate with et in Latin, but this conjunction is lost in Old Norse. Uh, postal is postally, different adaptations of a Greek word again. Uh, Yesuis Christaus. It's in interesting that in Gothic, Christaus looks like a uh, U-stem. That's how this name is treated. Uh, curious to note that in Old Norse, you can tell they were converted by Latin speakers because they used the Latin inflection of uh, Jesus, Yesus, which includes a genitive singular Yesu, which is pretty unique. Again, that B uh, preposition lost in Old Norse. That G, G, A, always lost in Old Norse, except for a couple places where it's left over. It's just a G, uh, like in uh, Likr, alike, which you can sometimes also see as Glikr. That's a, a tiny remnant of that prefix. It's otherwise lost in Old Norse. Uh, Glovinai. That is a dative singular um, cognate with leave or believe in English, but levi in Old Norse, as I mentioned, pretty direct cognate, as is valdizra, genitive plural with gawali to say, chosen ones, direct cognates there. To do this, we've seen before, ya. Yeah. It's another uh, conjunction, means and. Uh, this is also lost in Old Norse and in English, but uh, interestingly preserved in Finnish and Estonian where it was borrowed as the conjunction, ya. Yeah. Uf kuntia, this is like knowledge in Gothic. Ulv kini uh, would be the Old Norse equivalent with I mutation from that J on the U. Uh, in Old Norse, that would mean more like over acquaintance. And uh, sunyos, directly cognate with Old Norse sunyar, genitive singular of uh, sin denial. Uh, this actually isn't a word for sin. I think it's what I said at first, but it's truth in Gothic. 
Um, so in Old Norse, we'd want sants or sinaliques here. Um, sinyar, sinyos, they are directly cognate. You've got that I mutation of U by J and a Y, and you have O's and endings typically becoming A, and that S, a word final Z, in Gothic become S, but of course all those Z's become R's in Old Norse. I've mentioned before that the relative is done really differently in Gothic. So here is uh, so, feminine nominative singular plus that relative particle E. Uh, in Old Norse, we would want uh, actually that form of the soto pronoun to agree with the, the, the head word the relative clause is built on. So we'd want this to be the feminine genitive singular therar plus S, or later er. Old Norse doesn't have that E relative. Again, we've lost that preposition B, English by. Gaguthin, this is a, uh, Gothic is really fond of these, uh, these informant um, abstract nouns in the Bible. Old Norse has them too, but um, by Old Norse that N is actually lost, you just have the I at the end, these are these feminine abstracts. This particular one, formed from good or godliness, doesn't exist in uh, Old Norse, if it did, it would probably be givy, givy, using the G-O-V form of, uh, of God. And then ist is, that has lost its T in Old Norse, and it's S, and later classical Old Norse becomes er, by analogy with the other uh, present forms of that verb, which have R in them. So that gives you a little bit of a comparison of how Gothic and Old Norse uh, might look that the word order is fairly different from Gothic to Old Norse. Partially, probably, it's just that Wolfilo, the translator of the Gothic Bible, is basing his word order pretty directly. He doesn't want to diverge too much from his Greek original. Um, it's possible that Gothic just had word order a lot like early medieval Greek, but I think it's more likely that he's just calcing it real hard in his, his Greek original that he's translating from. And of course, if you spell Gothic, by Old Norse conventions, you'll notice that it looks a lot more like Old Norse, with the main difference being that um, those Z's become R's in Old Norse, including when word finally they become S in Gothic. And of course, there's I mutation in Old Norse, which there isn't in Gothic. I have a couple videos where you can learn more about phenomena like I mutation in Old Norse, and of course, my forthcoming class in Old Norse that I'm going to be running. Uh, that I've recently announced that I'll have more details about uh, this month. Uh, we'll, uh, you're going to learn a lot about eye mutations and other phenomena like that. Maybe, ultimately, if that old Norse class works out, maybe I'll do some kind of basic Gothic reading class or something that might be interesting, but I think that's well down the road, and I doubt there'd be as much interest as in old Norse. After all, there's not much to read in Gothic except the Bible, so you can read that in a lot of languages. But for students of Germanic philology, it's worthwhile to know at least some Gothic, at least be familiar with it. Well, for now, from a freezing mountainside high in Pikes Peak country in beautiful Colorado, thank you, Patreon, for your continued support of this channel. And to all of you, all the best.